Howdy everyone! For today's Jolly Lark, I'm trying out a new flame technique. I wanted to see if I could get some fire that was really bright. The new flame caster models from Conquest, Last Argument of Kings, from Parabellum seemed like a terrific fit for this. They're really cool, kind of flame genies. They go together really nicely, and they've got lots of fire to work with. But let's start with a failure. This is an example of why to do a test model. I primed this white, dry brushed it yellow, sponge painted on some orange and red, and I just didn't like it. But that's okay. Fluorescent orange spray paint to the rescue. This is a new brand of spray paint I've been fooling around with that is a really comes in a wide array of colors, and a lot of them are useful for miniature painting. I resprayed my test model with the fluorescent orange and was much happier with the effect. So let's dive into another model here, another model from the same unit, and I'll walk you through the steps that I did to get this fiery effect. Um, now, a couple of my goals, your goals might vary, but what I wanted to try to do was get like a really vibrant glowing fire. And you know, it almost doesn't come through in this video because the orange I used is an actu a true fluorescent orange that almost looks like it has a glow to it when light hits it. I wanted really bright fire. I didn't want to use an airbrush because lots of people still don't have airbrushes, even though they're, they're, they're super useful tools, but not everyone has the time or the space for it. And I wanted it to be quick enough to paint a whole bunch of these. I love genies and mythology and, and fiction and wanted to be able to paint you know 12 of these reasonably quickly. So I didn't want it to be a, a hard painstaking process, which is what led me to get to a fluorescent orange spray paint as an option. Looked around a little bit and the big box stores had some like hazard stripe fluorescent orange paints that didn't seem like they'd be great. You know, if they're if it's meant for marking pavement, I probably maybe don't want to spray it on a miniature. But then I found those Montana brand spray paints at a, a local Ace hardware store. Like I said, they come in like a hundred different colors, uh, including some really cool fluorescents. Something else that's neat about them is that they're acrylic spray paints, kind of like GW's. So they dry pretty quickly in about 30 to 60 minutes, and they have a low flow nozzle, so it's pretty easy to control. I, I really like them. You might be seeing these make an appearance in another video, and I might try to get a setup so I can take some video outside, because they, they really are different than their regular spray paints I've tried before. So all I'm doing here is putting on a layer of bright yellow contrast um, over the white primer. Um, having played around with the orange Montana spray for the next batch of these I do, I'm gonna just spray them yellow. So you could spray them yellow with a can, with an airbrush, you could brush on some contrast paint. Contrast paint over white is a great way to do a yellow base coat, much easier than yellow opaque paints. So get a nice yellow base coat on all the flames and then we'll be ready for the next step. So. The next step is a little bit like taking the finished cake out of the oven because what I did is take this outside and spray it from above, pretty much just from above with that fluorescent orange um, spray paint from Montana. And my idea here was to, so you're starting with the base coat yellow, spray it orange and then sponge paint on a little bit of a transparent purple, which should serve to both darken the orange and create a little bit of a cooling flames, charcoal sort of effect. And you can see here that this is this is a really bright orange and it really gives it sort of a, a vibrancy that would be hard to achieve, I think, with brushed on or dry brushed on paint. I, I haven't found a fluorescent orange paint that is as opaque and as bright as this. Because I wanted to protect the fluorescent orange spray layer, knowing that that would be a little bit hard to touch up, I started going pretty easy with the purple to begin with. This is some Liquitex Deep Violet ink. I'll put a link to that down below. Mix in with some clear medium. I'm applying it with just a little bit of a, a ripped up makeup sponge held with some clamping tweezers. Now, this is a good example of uh, what the orange looks like because as you can see, this purple is not really doing very much. There, there's, there's not enough ink in here, but that's okay. I, I wanted to start slow. Um, and see, I, I didn't know for sure how much ink I was gonna need to put on to have the effect. You do wanna put it on in a few layers. You wanna sponge some of the, the medium watered down. I don't use water, because then you'll, it'll be thin and run. You wanna use a thicker medium. This is the Pro Acryl Wash and Glaze Medium, which is a little bit thicker, but Golden makes one, Liquitex makes one. Just use some sort of reasonably thick, clear medium. and. Dabbing on the purple is a multi-step process. It doesn't take long, it's easy to do. It's, I think it's fun to do because it, it's kind of loose and, and carefree. 
Um, but you're kind of putting a little bit of purple on the raised areas and kind of gradually darken them down. I think I ended up doing two, two to four layers on most parts of the miniature. But let's skip ahead here and I'll put a little more ink into the mix and you'll see the purple going on a little more effectively. So adding just a drop or two at a time, you know, you really want to go slow. The ink, ink is very heavily pigmented. There's a lot of color in there um, and it's transparent. You know, you can see the, the white of the parchment paper through the ink. It's, it's, you know, ink is pretty different than purple paint. Almost more, you're almost making something more like a contrast paint here. I thought this reddish violet was a really good match for the orange. It kind of did what I wanted it to do, but you probably could also use any sort of translucent purple paint um, that you, you have on hand. Army Painters purple wash might work, purple tone might work well. Um, I probably wouldn't use a contrast paints because contrast paints are a mixture of opaque and transparent pigments. Um, but this worked well. So this is a few drops of ink in some, some clear medium. And you can see now that I'm really, I'm getting somewhere with the purple now. <laughs> Before it wasn't really doing very much and I, I would have had to probably put on seven or eight layers of the more watered, more dilute purple ink. But with just a, another drop or two of ink in the mix, you're quickly building up some purple color. And you know, th think about what areas um, that you want to look darker. You know, I'll post some pictures of the finished models on my Instagram page if you want to use those for reference. And you kind of think about the areas you want to be a little darker. Make sure you're putting some purple there with every layer. And then you can kind of fade the sponge painted effect out by just putting fewer layers on. Um, so you're putting on the same dilution of ink with each pass and the areas that end up darker are just getting more passes as you're building up more purple color on those. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is do a couple layers and then set them aside and I'll do, I'm painting a unit of three of these. So do a layer on each one and then once I've done that, go in and base coat the skin and then do another layer of the purple ink and then base coat the cloth and then do another layer of the purple ink and then do the the metallic bits and that way you can kind of let the ink dry make sure that's fully dry because you also want to make sure you're not pulling up any of the the previous layers of ink with the sponge which can happen if it's not fully dry the exact order of what you're doing uh, in between layers of purple doesn't much matter i'm going to start by base coating the skin a dark blue uh, i thought that would contrast well kind of set off the orange flames nicely um, and I, again, I'm, I am working to protect the orange flame layer. So I'm kind of going on loose with the blue anywhere that's next to cloth that I know is going to be green later um, or next to metal. And I'm being a little more careful and less sloppy on any parts of the skin that are going to be next to the flames. So with the uh, skin base coat done, I'm going to go back, grab my purple sponge. And this is all pretty quick. You know, th th this is less than an hour for this model about you have to do all the flames and stuff. So it's, you know, ink is still wet on the parchment paper beneath me. Um, so once I've finished up, you know, before I even move on to the next model, once I've finished up, I put a little purple, put a little more on the areas I want to be darker, kind of gradually, just layer by layer, building up that, that clear layer of purple until you kind of get the look you're going for. And you can start to see as the purple is added to the raised areas of the flame, the, the orange really glows in the spots where you're, you're, you've left the orange. I, I really like the effect. So I'll post the colors I use down below. Um, they don't matter so much. You could choose your own colors for the, the skin or the, the cloth. I thought the dark blue skin and the green kind of turquoise jade color for the, the cloth would go well with the copper on the metal bits, but you certainly could change those up. The, the fire is the thing that's different, new to me and that I was really pleased with the effect of the, the purple ink over the fluorescent orange spray paint and wanted to share that with you. Like I said, I'll post the colors I use for the other elements below, um, but it's for the skin and the cloth, I'm just using pretty straightforward layering, blending techniques. So again, here we've got the uh, in-between base coats, kind of base coating the, the cloth with green, and now I'm adding a little more purple. And purple ink has a neat effect where every time you add a more layer, it's almost like it shifts in colors. You end up with a lot of those kind of natural variations that you get in flames. Now to fully capture the kind of cooling flame, magical charcoal sort of effect, I'm gonna finish the flames by mixing some of the same dark blue that I used as the base coat of the skin and kind of tying that in. And flames you know, often have a little bit of blue in them. I'm gonna add just a little bit of that dark blue to the very tips of the flames by grabbing a new piece of sponge here in the, the cross lock tweezers. Ripping the sponge is helpful because it gives you a more raggedy, irregular edge. 
and I've mixed that blue with some of the same Proacryl clear medium to create a clear blue. It's a little more opaque because I'm starting with paint and not ink, but at this point it's really just going on to the very tips of the flames, and it's okay it, that it's a little bit opaque because you're not trying to have any of the orange show through. Just getting a little bit of that kind of stipply sponge effect, um, which also gives kind of a, a sparky, ignited texture to the tips of the flames, which I thought was cool. And this is a, a very light touch, just a little dab dab here and there with the with the blue, not not much at all. Yeah, it's probably easier to see probably on the still photos of the finished models uh, at the beginning or end of the video or on the the Jolly Lark Instagram page. And then to finish off the flame effect, the kind of magical flame effect, I'm going to grab some of a lighter kind of medium blue. So I want something that's nice and saturated, very vibrant. Um, and again, with a, a fresh, smaller, clean piece of sponge, uh, I'm going to grab that in the tweezers. And I'm just going to put the tiniest little flecks of this medium blue onto the very, very tips of the flames, trying to basically keep the little flecks of blue, of medium blue, where the on top of the dark blue from earlier and i've really worked at getting most of that blue paint off the sponge so that you can see on my, my uh, testing it out my thumb here you don't want blotches like that you're really you're really going for just speckles and you need to get most of the paint off the sponge until you start to get that speckly effect and and you can really see how that just those applications of purple ink with a little bit of dark blue have created a, a very cool flame effect uh, with some neat gradations and color. Sorry, it's a, a touch out of focus here, but hopefully you, you get the idea as we move around the miniature and just add a little bit of the bright blue to the tips of the dark blue flames. Let's zoom in on another model in the unit here and just so I can show you just how little of these medium blue speckles I'm putting on. And I'm also putting a little bit on you know, some of the knuckles and parts of the darker skin, and, and that's fine, as if it's kind of cooling down when the fire hits the body. It's just just little flecks of this, this medium blue in the spots where you want it. And you get this neat gradation between yellow to orange to kind of a magenta to purple to dark blue, and then the dark blue lightens up just a little bit on the tips. I like using the same paints um, in different places on a model. I think it helps tie things together, and especially on a magical creature like this where it's kind of all a magical construct. It's not natural materials. They're going to have variations in color. So what I'm going to do is use the same medium blue that we used to add sparks to the flames and use that as the primary highlight color for the dark blue skin. Like, I'm not going to go into detail on the, the technique here. It's, it's pretty basic highlight the the raised areas sort of layered highlighting, but going from that dark blue that we started with up to the same medium blue that we used for the sparks on the fire. Like I said earlier, ditto on the cloth, a pretty basic highlighting uh, job on the cloth. I'm starting with the dark green, the dark kind of scurvy green and going up to a brighter turquoise. Uh, this is virtually exactly the same color scheme and technique uh, that I used on the painting the Cthulhu cultists video that I released previously. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. So if you want to see that uh, kind of wet blending process in more detail, I really go into it in that video and it's exactly the same. It's the same two colors. It's the same technique. Um, I was pleased enough with it when I did the cultists that I wanted to use. I, I knew I wanted to use the same Jade turquoise color on something else soon. And these seemed like a good fit. Now, before we move on to the next step, one thing I did do a little bit differently when choosing where to put the highlights on these miniatures, because you've literally got, you know, flames coming in, um, I kind of put highlights in the traditional places, you know, on the raised uh, folds of the cloth and stuff like that. But on, on all the parts of fabric that are facing the flames, you know, you would expect those to be very bright if the flames are bright. Normally, if you have a, a tabard or something like that hanging down from a miniature, the outward facing side of the cloth is going to be brighter than the part of the cloth that's hanging, you know, um, between their legs that are the, you know, a cloak, the part of the cloak that's facing the sun is going to be brighter than the part of the cloak that's facing the body. But in this case, the parts of the fabric that are facing the body, like the, the equivalent of the back of a cloak is going to be brighter given that their body is a bunch of fire. So I used my lightest highlight colors for the cloth on the insides of some of those hanging bits of fabric. Which I just think it's subtle. You're probably not ever going to see it in the middle of a game of Conquest, but it made me happy doing it, and I thought it was kind of a neat effect. 
One thing you can do to get, speed up your painting for an army project is just to use a relatively limited palette. Um, you know, just trying to keep the number of colors that you're using down to a minimum. Um, and for these, I'm gonna use a copper metallic. This is one of the new reformulated Turbo Dork metallics. They've got new bottles and a new consistency of paint that really seems to work a lot better with just a traditional brush. I previously, I thought of Turbo Dork paints as mostly needing an airbrush, but these, the new metallic colors are really great and, uh, and work great with a traditional brush. Um, so here I've base coated all the metal bits in a dark bronze. Um, I did that off camera, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so with the, and what I did as far as a limited palette, I kind of made as much, as many parts of the model as I could metal. Um, repeating the same color on multiple elements just speeds up painting, it makes the whole project go a little faster. So anything that could be metal, I made it metal. And anything that could be metal, I made it the same dark bronze. And I'm just going in now and highlighting the dark bronze with some of the new Turbo Dork Two Cents copper color, which is simultaneously a really great copper and is very, very bright. Um, I feel like it matches the brightness of the orange flames really nicely. So my two thumbs up for the new the new Turbo Dork Metallics. I haven't tried the, any of the color shifting, reformulated color shifting paints yet, but just as a straight metallic, I think this is my favorite copper metallic that I've used. For the bases, I've base coated them in a, just a basic medium brown. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is to kind of make it look like the flames are erupting up from the earth a bit. I'm going to take some of that earth color and a, a really open uh, mesh sponge that's got a texturing sponge. I'll, I'll put a link to that down below too. I'm going to take that texturing sponge and just use it to bring a little bit of the dirt color up onto the flames as if the, the hot air of the flames is kind of bringing some dirt up with it. And it'll kind of help blend the flames into the earth um, so it's not quite such a, a stark contrast. For the eyes, just painted them white, and then I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of the Vallejo Game Color Yellow Wash to give them a bit of a yellow glow. Now, one of the things I like about the Conquest models is they're, they've got plenty of details to look great on the tabletop, but they're not you know, chock-a-block full of tiny little details that take forever to paint. Um, so once you've kind of got the basics of the model done, you just go back in, there's a couple little feathers and some pearls and stuff like that. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, kind of cream colored paint on. That's kind of it. There's not a ton of details to get lost in. And finally, I'm gonna apply a brown wash to kind of a warm brown wash to all the copper metallic areas just to add in a little bit of some darker shadows in the cracks and get a little bit more definition into some of the fine uh, bits of the metal areas like the bracelets and stuff like that. I'm using an old Agrax Earthshade gloss, but and kind of whatever warm brown wash you have kicking around is probably fine. Um, regular Agrax Earthshade is fine, or one of the Army Painter uh, brown tones, um, something like that. You know, something that's a, a shade or a wash, probably not a contrast paint. That would cover up too much of the metallics. Um, if you can find some of the old Agrax Earthshade gloss, I like that, but it doesn't matter that much. Um, just make sure it's uh, a really a translucent paint, not a, a semi-opaque paint like a contrast paint. Now to uh, further blend the flames into the base, I'm gonna mix up a little bit of uh, some light yellow, some a bright, a bright yellow, then mix with a little bit of white and just kind of pull, dry brush that, kind of pulling out from the base of the flames onto the gravel to kind of add a little bit of a yellow-ish glow coming from the flames onto the basing texture. Just this is not this is not a lot. Just kind of at the edges where the flames are meeting the the gravel texture. I just use the the Jolly Lark basic basing mix for these, um, and that kind of again just helps further blend the flames into the dirt that they're rising from. And there you go. They look good on a dry grass game mat. I think it's a cool looking unit, and I can't wait to paint up some more Sorcerer Kings. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you next time on another Jolly Lark.